Anxiety is felt throughout Brazil, where the lower house of Congress will help decide the fate of embattled President Dilma Rousseff. Rousseff has denied accusations of corruption, but all eyes will be on a roll call vote Sunday, and that decision could split the country. CCTV's Paulo Cabral is joining us live from Brasilia. Paulo, what's it looking like right now? Well, in preparation for Sunday, intense negotiations are happening here in Brasilia, in the parliament building that's behind me, and also, I mean, all over the capital, you know, in hotels, in political offices. Uh, both sides are trying to gather support for a victory on the impeachment vote expected to happen on Sunday. Situation extremely volatile, not looking good for the government already for a few days, but today, actually, the day started with some uh, good news for the government. Maybe not enough to revert the trend. You know, it's not looking good for President than Dilma Rousseff, but it certainly did the job to try and keep their militants, their supports still up for the fight. On the last day before the crucial vote in Brazil, the government camp got something of a morale boost, as some members of parliament, previously in favor of President Dilma Rousseff's ouster, signaled they would instead vote against her impeachment. Others said they would abstain from the vote entirely. Rousseff herself released a video on social networks to again stake her claim that she is the victim of a conspiracy. When I was elected, the defeated side asked for a vote recount, tried to nullify the elections, and then began to conspire for the impeachment. They created all of this political instability. Rousseff was expected to personally meet with these government supporters camping out in Brasilia, who rejected the allegations accusing her of manipulating government funds. She cancelled, but former President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva showed up in her place. We are fighting for democracy, for respect of the Constitution, for respect of state of law. That's why we have to talk to members of parliament and show them that this country cannot get used to live going from one coup d'etat to the next. It's not acceptable to have a president unseated because she is not doing well in popularity surveys. If this was the way to do things, not a single government would last more than three years in this country. The government and their allies are keeping up to the very last moment their efforts to gather popular support against the impeachment process. Even if it's not clear how much this kind of pressure can impact at this stage the decision that's going to be taken inside the country's parliament on Sunday. Analysts say that to some extent the Workers' Party is also using the standoff and talk of a coup d'etat to regroup their left-wing base in preparation for a possible loss. So uh, Lula is giving a strategy to fight against the impeachment, but they, they have a perception that possibly they will lose. So he, he will be preparing an, a new configuration about the, polit the party discourse they still have a, a strong militancy. They are still the most organizing party in the Republic, but uh, they must too find a new way in a new space in the Brazilian political system. In the Chamber of Deputies, there is non-stop activity, both in backroom negotiations and floor debate. With impeachment vote just a day away, the outcome still cannot be predicted with any certainty. And what we hear in Brasilia right now is that the fight now is vote for vote, particularly with the representatives that say they have not yet made up their minds or have not declared the vote. And, and to give you some context, you know, these representatives, the undecided ones, usually don't have much of an ideological affiliation to one side or the other. They're looking more for interests of their constituencies or special interests or their own interests to be elected next time or, or to do something else. And so we have both sides offering these politicians. Uh, something and it, it comes down to some extent to a matter on who they will trust and who they think will be able to offer more for them and their constituencies either the incumbent government or the vice president Michel Temer who could be in power in a few weeks. Paulo tell us what's the vice president Michel uh, Temer doing now is he actively discussing his possible government? Well, he is, you know. I mean, in back rooms, this has been going on already for a few days, even a couple of weeks, you know, even discussing who could be potential ministers and all that. 
but you know, uh, Vice President Michel Temer also tried to get some distance of all this over the last few days, at least an apparent distance, because uh, his activism was uh, seen uh, by many people, and the government was using this to say that actually he's not, uh, he was just willing to take over power without being elected. I mean, this was sort of, 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 of bringing uh, more force to the government's line that this is a coup d'etat. So Vice President Michel Temer decided to go back to Sao Paulo, his political base, and get some apparent distance uh, here from uh, Brazil from the capital. But today, as winds were blowing uh, seemingly favorably to the government, he did come back and he's also taking part now in this direct negotiations to make sure that the opposition group, that his group, will have the two-thirds uh, of the votes needed on Sunday to uh, go on with the impeachment process of President Dilma Rousseff. She would not be unseated this Monday, you know, even if the opposition gets their way, because this deal had to go to the Senate. It's expected to happen if the impeachment passes. Now this is expected to happen more or less around mid-May. And then if the government loses again in Senate, then President Dilma Rousseff would be unseated initially for six months pending trial. But, you know, all analysts say that once she's out of the presidential palace, it would be really hard to see her going back. Paulo Cabral, thank you for the update. Joining us live from Brasilia.